Hi guys, here's Doc's Market Minute for Monday, February 8th. We'll start off today with the S&P 500. Markets continue to plummet once again. What we're seeing here from the top down, and then I'll go bottom up here, and I'll show what the difference is, is that on the monthly chart here, we have a lower high setting up and a lower low. So now we have a change in polarity to the downside. Okay, so within that market context, this is where we're going to see everything happening. So within that context, if we go down here to the weekly chart, what we're seeing is now nothing more than a lower high setup. So we had lower high, lower low, lower high, and so far, what's next for this? Are we going to have a lower low or a higher low? So that's very, very important, but we're not going to know what's happening with that until we see the smaller time frames actually reverse. And so the point here is that, and actually I'm going to skip right by the daily chart and go down here to the 78 minute chart and show what I was talking about last week. So last week we had a little rally in our hands, okay, a little rally in our hands. So we had on the 78 minute chart, higher highs and higher lows. And so we came down here to an equal low. And what I mentioned was, okay, be careful with this because this could be a lower high and reversals start from the inside out. Reversals start from these smaller time frames first, and then they propagate upwards like this. Okay, so it doesn't happen the other way around. Reversals start from the inside out. And so what we had happen here on Friday was actually hitting uh, below this channel and to an almost equal low again. And then all it needed to do was what it did this morning, print a lower low. And you can see how fast these things unfurl to the downside. So these always catch people off guard where everybody over here is, is you know, super bullish, right? Expecting it just to go higher. And all of a sudden we wake up to this morning in extreme disappointment and everybody's just washing out their positions, you know, screaming in panic. But this is very normal market structure. So now we need to figure out whether or not we're going to print a much lower low. I don't think so. I, I think maybe we might get just a, a brief undercut of these lows down here at about low 1800s. And I think that we'll probably start to see the beginnings of a multi-leg rally, which might take a couple of months to work out. It's going to be a very grinding, torturous affair, right? So similar to what we've been through recently with the August bottom. So off the August bottom, this took a couple months to bottom, and then we had this all of this mess over here before we started the the process all over again. So this is very, very similar. We can see that from the August bottom, we had to get a retest in September, and then this eventually led to a strong rally. So that was uh, the October rally was more of the rip your face off variant. I'm not sure if we're necessarily going to see the same thing. Typically, once markets truly get into a bear market, we see more of a rising wedge channel like this, not something which is more of an almost uh, double bottom straight up like this. So obviously, the next question is, when is this going to bottom? Again, this is where we have to watch the smaller time frame charts. What happens here is if we start to see it work higher like this, if we print a higher low and then a higher high, we'll start making the next swing higher like this, okay? So everything keys off of this 78 minute chart, much like what we talked about last month when in January just kept on working lower and lower and lower. And my guidance back then was to watch that 78 minute chart. And this is what we had to watch for all the way down is we finally made a higher high, higher low, higher high, equal low, higher high. This is what it's necessary to do. And it all starts at the smaller time frame. So larger time frames dominate the trend. So we're in a monthly downtrend right now. But within that context, reversals start from the inside out. So this is always a, a, a great twosome of those rules to understand. So you know how all of these pieces are sort of plugged together. And the price action makes sense instead of leaning upon indicators to tell you what's going on. Now, I wanted to quickly go over to my gap chart here. The gap chart from January showed a gap in January. So we came down to this gap several times and didn't fill it. And so this is what I talked about this weekend is that, okay, we may fill this gap down here. And eventually, I mean, we just blew through it. So now what we have is all the blue squares are unfilled gaps. So all of these are upside gaps. 
we don't really have any downside gaps all the way back to 2014. So the the last downside gap that we have is is very early on in 2014. So that's a long way away and much, much lower prices than today. So I would say these gaps are going to be uh, ripe for being filled. I don't know if we're ever going to get back to these ones within the next few months or so. So that would be quite an event if we actually came back up and filled those. I would say these are fair game here in the next month or so. Last thing I want to bring up is silver. Silver's making a move off the bottom, although in the greater context of things, when you go out to the monthly chart, you realize how small this move actually is. So we get all excited about a move from 13 and change up to 14 and change. And that's just the nature of what's going on with silver right now. It's just gotten so pummeled over the last couple of years. So watch this trend line. Watch this weekly trend line. This is really what's been governing the price action for really since the beginning of 2013 or so. This is where we've started to really utilize that channel on the monthly chart. So watch this channel. If it starts to break out above there and break above this high, then we can watch for whether or not we're going to get higher highs and higher lows on there. And all that's going to do is basically just build up the next lower high on the monthly chart. So we haven't reversed anything at all. Everybody gets excited when they see something like this, but this is not really the beginning of reversal, not yet, not from a major time frame standpoint. Just like what I was talking about before, larger time frames dominate, but reversals start from the inside out. So we're going to have to watch this reverse, get above this trend line, and then start to reverse on the daily chart first before anything is going to happen on the weekly chart and propagate up to at least that higher low, or in this case a lower high, on the monthly chart. All right, folks, that is it for today's report. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you tomorrow.